Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Hey guys, hey everyone. We wanted to just uh, reach out to you today, man. I'm here with my lovely wife, the official Miss Jamaica, man. And uh, we wanted to recap a little bit different this week, man. Uh, we've been having so much going on, man, that we barely get the time to even sit down and talk to y'all. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to come at you guys with just an overall on, on Boss Talk 101, man. You know? Um, What's, what's some of your favorite episodes, some of the stuff that you've seen, that, some of the favorite moments? There's so many. Um, cause we've done over 300 episodes in the past 11 months, so it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you different parts of the interviews that, or different parts of different segments that were more captivating to me and touching to me, but for me to just say one entire interview was that's the bomb, I couldn't say, but there's certain parts of each interview that held a special place in my heart. Yeah, now when you look at recap, what we did was we wanted to come up with a way to where we could reach out to our people and really give them a, a real bird's eye view of what's going on and in, in, in where we're going with the, with the show. Um, so when you think about, I, when I think back to shows that touch it for me, there is so many, like you say, I have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that stick out the most to me, um, you gotta understand, when we started this, we didn't start this. Um, we came not understanding how this whole thing plays out, right? So when you look at the things that we've encountered, when you go all the way back to when Mike Jones came on the show, and you look at uh, John, who introduced us to Brown, and he talked to me about Slim, but he also, uh, introduced us to um, just those different guys that he brought to us uh, when Mike Jones brought him over here and, 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 and you never would have thought that he would have got killed right after that. Exactly. He ended up dying, uh, getting killed by a, 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 a dancer and we never seen that coming. Exactly. So when we came into this thing, I never, he was so nice and he spent money here at the shop and, and it was just something else to see, um, you know, that God had us in a position to meet him before his untimely demise. Because when we started this um, podcast, we've never been on a podcast. We've never um, had anything to do with our, we did some research, yes, but whereas um, what all entails or what all might come, these are things that you learn as you go. And um, our goal in the beginning which it still is, to keep a very positive platform, to be able to help the masses, to be able to educate the masses, to be able to touch people, um, people who come on here, people who are watching in different ways. And one thing I know about life, you can't satisfy everyone. Um, the methods in which you go by it can be different. Um, God uses individuals in different ways. And what I've learned about personally in my life is the fact that you can't you can't question God you don't know exactly how a certain thing might pan out but he know the ultimate goal the ultimate destination and he know the reason why and um, never regret what you go through in life never regret a situation which we don't we just know that there's a purpose for everything yeah and when you think about, you know, not only that, you know, the day that we met uh, Corey Clout, mm -hmm. uh, and we were in here and we were, uh, we were in uh, a positive mode, uh, doing things to where, uh, that was early on when we first started. And Corey Clout uh, talked about Bishop Omar. Mm -hmm. And Bishop Omar, uh, we was going to him to get well. That was the first day that I had really honed in on Bishop Omar. I never knew him before that. But for some some odd reason, that was something that we spoke on because of OGU. Right. And we didn't know that the next day, that night, the next day, he would he, he would be dead. You know, we're just doing an interview and being positive and trying that to That he would have passed away. But passed away, uh, that he would have, uh, his untimely demise. Right. You know, but the thing, you know, it just, with COVID and all the stuff that played out in, the, in us bringing this platform, it wasn't easy for us to streamline this platform into a, into a uh, time zone where you have COVID, you got all these different things going on, then you got the, 
the different back and forth that people have. Um, so when Corey came on, uh, that was a tough thing because after that we had to have a conversation about what we had already recorded. And then we had to come back and redo the episode because of uh, us wanting Bishop Omar to get well. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it's just time, man. So the, the that day, uh, we started to build a relationship with uh, Corey Cloud. That day was the day that um, he lost uh, one of his closest friends. So we became close in that instance. And that's the way God will do things. He'll have you to where he puts you in a place where you can feel different needs of an individual that you may not replace them completely, but God gives fillers. And we love, uh, we even had a chance to speak with Bishop Omar's wife. Right. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Anita. Anita Jewell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just just a dope plan. We've had a, had opportunity to speak with people, man, that we never would have would have been able to speak to if it had not been for this podcast, Boss Talk 101. Exactly. So, I mean, and, and, and you couldn't have wrote that. No. You couldn't have scripted that. That had to happen the way that it did. Um, and each person that's been on this platform has been a blessing to us. Um, we try to keep in contact with everyone, to check upon everyone, to make sure everyone's doing well. Um, mm -hmm. There's no bad blood. Um, and that's how you have to live your life. You have to know that people come into your life and out of your life sometimes for different reasons. Take everything as a lesson and learn your lesson very well. Man, so, and also, you know, uh, just fast forward in a little bit because we're just recapping because mm -hmm. we're winding down in a year. Right. The year we're, and it's we're in November so and it to went talk the fourth about quarter. Everybody right now. We could be, yeah, it's gonna I would be name, a very long man. KLC, uh, KL, yes. see, I would name uh, all these different Duro. people. Duro, Duro, man, Duro was dope. He just mm -hmm. showed up and came and supported us, man. Uh, Don it's Chief, Brown, Don Chief, Don Chief, yeah, all those guys, um, man. Trilly Polk, Trilly Polk, and them drove in and B, B Banks, Banks from Houston, man, and uh. You know the thing. The thing we the, those the, those were the starting defining moments for Boss Talk One Hundred and One. So when you look at Boss Talk One Hundred and One, uh, and you look at how we uh, how we um, you know um, walked into this thing, we like 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 my wife said, we we didn't have a clue of what we were walking into. But it has been a blessing to be able to touch the lives we've touched. Going down to Atlanta, going up to Los Angeles, going over to uh, Vegas. Um, going down to Houston. We've had some great moments with some great people. And these people were very dear to us. And I believe that God put us in their life so that we would be able to be a bridge and not a wall. So that we'd be able to fill gaps and not leave holes. This is what we come into this thing doing because we've always been about unity and peace. Mm. As the word of God say, peace and, and I come to bring peace. I didn't come to bring a sword. You know, but some of the things that we've encountered have been things that we got into situations where we would speak on it or ask about it. Even when Sean Cotton from St. Cheese was on here, we asked about Mo3 and Trap Boy Freddy and uh, who else was it? Um, Yellow Beezy. And then, you know, uh, after that, I believe it was after that, we interviewed Low Beezy or it mm -hmm. may have been a little bit. No, it was before that. I don't know. It was so close, it's hard to tell, but just a dope group of people, man. And then, you know, um, we sat back and then we ended up interviewing Rocky Water. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're doing something to where God has us in a place to where we're able to touch each one of these individuals in love and, and, and care about them and, and show them the love that 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 we 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 both share with one another in a way to where we can say, hey man, we can make it to see another day. Right. You know, and so when you look at it, um, man, I can't forget Charleston White. Charleston White is the one of the most uh, uh, pinnacle guys that's been on the show. When I say pinnacle, I'm talking about the peak that he has is the fact that when he comes on, the numbers that he brings is something of a whole nother level. And it's not because he, it's not because uh, he, he don't deserve it because he outworks everybody that I see that's come on the show. Nobody outworks Charleston White when it comes to getting on the internet and uh, every single every day, every single morning, every single evening, anytime he takes out two, three it. times a day. And I tell him that all the time. I'm like, I know why you're successful in what you do. It's because of the way that your work ethic is when it comes down to building your platform. And you got to think about it. Although he gets on the internet 
every day, two times, three times a day, you have to still find time to do research because a lot of things that he's speaking about, he has to do research. Yes, a lot of comments, if you read the comments, they talk about, well, he's talking nonsense. He, he don't know what he's talking about. But, or some people say he's mixing facts with falsism. So it goes both ways. But in order for you to even spit any facts, you have to do some sort of research. So he's doing something. You know what I, I mean? I agree. A hundred percent agree because uh, the things that he's speaking on, he's speaking in real time. And that's the that's the whole game. He's speaking in real time on real incidents, mm -hmm. you know, that's happening in current time. I remember when we were down in East Texas, we went down and we spent time with Trill Talk No Peel Talk. And while while we was with Trill Talk No Peel Talk, we um we, we sat back and we um you know, uh, talked about Juneteenth. It was a Juneteenth event. Uh, they did down in, uh, shout out to Jefferson, Texas. And we went down there and uh, we was in Frog Town. I got to see my boy Smoke and Tinker and all the people that mean so much to me. In the country. In the country, I'm a country boy. And uh, so uh, we get down there and they asked Charleston about Juneteenth and about just a camera comes out. And the things that he said and the way that he defines that moment shows me that he's definitely in tune with what's going on. Uh, when it comes down to the history of the country and his his feel on, on things are it may not be something you agree on but when you start to become emotional about things what people say it shows that you're insecure in who you are and that you're immature in the things that are being spoken on because you don't have to even let someone have you emotionally juggling the facts of what they're speaking on you should be intelligent enough to be able to combat with whatever's going on without uh, getting emotionally involved. So a lot of times people just can't, they, 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 they can't uh, look at something on a social media platform and decipher between real and, fal real and falses. But you got to think about life. Even before social media, you had people who would say things about other people and it would hurt people's feelings because, you know, you always hear the saying, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, words may never, never hurt, hurt me. me. Yeah. Which is a lie because even before um, growing up as you know children, somebody say something about you, especially if they say the right, wrong mm -hmm. thing, so mm -hmm. to say, about you, it becomes a problem. You want to fight. You want to you know go beat up whoever. You want to do whatever. So it's not true. Words do hurt you, whether yeah. it's true or false. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now you have social media which touch the masses, which is not only my neighbors hearing about it or my friends hearing about it. This is the world who is hearing about oh, it. Well, yeah. So now it becomes such more pressure for people and people don't know how to hold their tongues, especially when it's not true. Because it's, it's going to be a defamation of character if you say something about me and it's not true and it's something to a point where it can it can hurt. No, definitely. Especially your career. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with that. Um, so, you know, we, 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 when we flew up and we met, it was, it was Charleston White introduced us to Melvin Foreman. Mm -hmm. And Melvin Foreman and him uh, actually uh, interviewed with us in uh, California. Mm -hmm. And when they interviewed with us, they wanted to uh, speak with Charleston because this was during the time when the Mob James thing that had happened. Actually, we had flew and met with Charleston White out in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. And we had just interviewed him and we went over to California. To California. And Charleston reached out to Melvin Former. And, right. And, I mean, Uncle Henny helped us. All kind of people reach out. Yeah, so uh, they knew, shout knew out each other. Space Boy. So Space Boy first okay. helped us and, and brought different people from California into our, uh, onto our platform, Boss Talk 101. And and I said that to say this, once we were there, Melvin Farmer uh, and, and uh, Atola Marv. Although we didn't interview Atola uh, Marv, Marv at he was that there. time, but he was present he was there, at the but, interview. But he was like, he wanted to speak with Charleston White. So fast forward to, to, to now and to see what transpired when we got that group of individuals together. Trying to build a bridge uh, between Melvin Farmer, uh, um, Atola Mar, um, which are gang members, uh, former gang gang members, who we are trying our best to uh, bridge gaps for our youth to make sure that they live to see another day. Mm -hmm. And by guiding for me with God in a way where He gives me a strategic way in spirit, in spirit, and in truth.
to help these young men to be able to uh, see older men get together and it not be uh, 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 a falling out you know, per se. But what happened was, I told Lamar, uh, Melvin Farmer, they flew into Texas to, to Texas. come on Boss Talk 101. Right. And when they did, we had no idea that what, what was about to happen. So, um, and I was like, whoa, you know, yeah, these guys. Uh, and they, who is Atola Lamar again? He is one of the uh, Piru, original Piru uh, OGs. Um, and that's in Bompton, which is Compton. Yeah, and then you had Melvin Farmer, who's a uh, crib. Uh, you can go on and you can look at Melvin Farmer on Vlad TV or any of these platforms, or our platform. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's been on so many. And uh, and these are both OGs. Correct. Crips so, and Blood. Cri Crips and Blood. They come okay. to talk to Charleston. Charleston have been strongly speaking out against gangs and gang violence. And he gave some valid points here in the interview. Mm -hmm. But then... I understood where Melvin Farmer and him was coming from when it came down to the fact that a lot of the lives have been lost. And so he was speaking on correct. people who have who've been passed, who've passed away. away. So there's two different weights laying way in here. Um, and man, I mean, I never would have thought that that interview would have spiraled out and controlled the way it did. And um, those guys, man, like I said, all three of those guys, dope individuals, it takes a special kind of person to be able to bridge those type of relationships and these people mean so much to the community so much to the culture and um so we're looking at ways to bring these different dynamics together mm -hmm. trying to figure out ways to help them to understand to be the pinnacle that they need to be so that the youth can look at them and be able to say you know what man we got to figure this out and get it together before we all end up uh causing ourselves way, way more harm than, than not and this could be the beginning of bringing even more people together, together. Um, who have their differences and would be eventually able to put down their pride, their egos, everything, and to work together for the greater good. And this is just the beginning. Yes, it didn't go exactly how we would want it to go because we're human beings. Just in life, we always want certain things to go a certain way. But as I always go back to God, God has a bigger picture he sees the bigger picture when we only see this little bit so we can't already always understand how this is going to play out later on mm -hmm. this can also be dissolved later on in a very you know in peaceful a manner. peaceful, peaceful manner. And positive manner but because of this beginning that's what led up to that wow so um it's a case where people seeing that Everyone's seen that, including ourselves, because we're wow. watching to see how this is going to all oh, unfold. Yeah. Yes. And we pray that it, it unfolds in a positive manner and a way where others can see that. And like, you know what? That's touching. That's moving. That's... I need to do that. I need to resolve this. I need to because it's not just talking. It's actually happening. Yeah. Well, there have been so many different things that's going to happen, you know. Um, another thing, you know, Charleston White again, because he's so vocal and his and because he's so uh, illuminate throughout the inner inner. Because we gave him a, a award for internet sensation mm -hmm. because of the work ethic. But he comes on the platform, uh, eight to AD from uh, Adam Twenty Two No Jumper uh, speaks pretty much uh, in a way. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back a little bit. When I first seen it, Crip Mac was on uh, Adam uh, 22's platform, and um, he left. But anyway, he, they they began to talk uh, uh, in a way about Charleston that was negative. Um, it was also somewhat demeanoring of Texas on a whole. One of the guys said that's even weirder when Texas was mentioned. Mm -hmm. We came on the platform over here. At, uh, you know, um, we just so happen to have an interview going with Charleston White. Right. Um, we ask why, same day, in real time, uh, why would AD say that he would set you up on Adam 22, no jumper, with all of these 4 million subscribers watching, and he has a personal vendetta against you. Have you ever met him? And he says, I've never met him. But you gotta think about this, words are powerful. As much as we say it doesn't hurt and everything like that, words are powerful. Some people, everybody know Charleston White is a case where some people love him and some people don't. 
somebody who um, can hear something like that who don't really like him at all can take that upon their head to do something when um, so people have to be careful of what they say well I mean Charleston, especially when well, you come say back, a lot too no we know Charleston say a lot but when you come back and say well I didn't mean it like that which AD yeah he said came that, back and re recanted he came back statement. and recanted that so that's the reason why I say you got to be careful I know in the midst of times and things and conversations people just say things just to you know just to say it but at the same time you have to you have to know what you're dealing with you know you're dealing with all these cameras you know you're dealing with um millions of people on your platform watching you they taking whatever you say as gold and not ever not everybody but majority of people say what you know take whatever you say as gold so you just have to be careful of what we put out there in the universe most definitely, you know, and, and like I said, um, Adam 22, uh, they did speak on Boss Talk in a way to where it didn't make me feel in no type of way because I, I love, so I, I don't have no problem with nobody. Um, those guys are dope. Their platform is way bigger than us. They put in so much more work than we have. We don't even, we just pull up. So. Yeah, and applaud to them because yeah, they've no, been around no. for so, a while so, and everything and like I that. Said, and I said that to say, you know, um, you know, those guys are dope. And, but the thing I can say is, you know, when you start looking at like us, we're smaller, but then Adam uh, 22 and them, oh, you know, they 2,000 subscribers. It do feel a way like, okay, you saying it's the 4,000, uh, I mean, 4 million subscribers. They small, they, yeah, we are. But at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're doing this for peace, man. We're not out here looking for no issues with anyone, but uh, we're not out here, you know, we ain't out here walking around like, you know, hey, man, you know, we're just going to let you say something. We're not going to say something. But how many subscribers do we have right now? Well, we got a few more than that. But still, you know, it's just, it was sarcasm. But the thing I can say, and I don't feel a certain way about that. But I can say that, uh, you know, to call us a nigga podcast, the nigga podcast, and to say all the things they said, it did like, oh, man, you know, like we didn't, we didn't, we didn't see that coming. But at the end of the day, you know, um, when you look at um, just podcasts on a whole, you know, we tried to bring this podcast in a way that it would be something different, enlightening. Uh, no, you know, we just getting started. Shout out to everybody who's been doing this from The Breakfast Club to a Vlad TV, Bella to say, say Cheese, man. That guy showed us love and came on our platform. I never forget it, man. And he just a dope dude, a very good entrepreneur. Me being an older guy, you know, uh, was able to see that and I've met so many entrepreneurs and I'm an entrepreneur myself to see a, a young buck you know what I'm saying getting to it I was like okay yeah we've been in this store for what uh, 15 years we've had seven different locations uh, to see him come out of the blue and be like man you know he do this too oh that was dope man you know what I'm saying so shout out to Say Cheese uh, uh, for, and thank you for coming on our platform but um, uh, not only him man Cam Capone man Cam Capone News man another one that's been you know, just uh, uh, just came out of nowhere and just showed us love, showed us mad love. And I can't be mad at him, man. Uh, we, people don't have to do anything. People right. do anything they want to do, but to show us the love that uh, these guys have shown us and, and the support, uh, Dallas uh, Global, Mogul Media, these guys are uh, Trill Talk, Trill Trill talk, talk. No Peel Talk. And, and, and not only Trill Talk, No Peel Talk, uh, just even, even you know, even Real Tune TV. These are dope platforms, man. A lot of them are Southern, but at the end of the day, and man, my boy, uh, Sco, Sco TV. Mm -hmm. is, is Chris, is that his name? Crisco. Crisco, man, Crisco, man. Shout out to that boy, man. And he came through, man, and, and showed us, man, love as well, man. Um, uh, hey, man, take over TV. I could keep going for all forever, man. It's very Springer. He, hey, man, these guys, man. Hey, listen, man, we in a good group of guys. And at the end of the day, I never seen any of this stuff coming. But at the end of the day, we like I said, we're in the South. So, of course, we're going to look a little different than everybody else. But the love that, that the people have shown us and the way that we've been embraced, man, you couldn't make you couldn't make this stuff up. Uh, hey, man, listen, man. And we and there's so much more to come. We got so much stuff scheduled that's about to happen that you guys are going to knock you off your feet, man. Um, is there anything else that I forget anything? Um, Woody. Man, wow, you had to bring that up. Woody Two Live, man, he came on the platform. 
You couldn't have wrote this. Warty 2 Live came on the platform. The guy that was standing directly behind him is the guy that kills him. And, and the group of guys that was here and the love that was here today, that they all was here, you couldn't have known that that, that was going to happen. There's no way you could have known that. And what did you live? Love this show, man. Mm -hmm. When he was alive, man, and, and, and my son hit him up, he, he came, wasn't no, you have people who did not come on our platform, who stood us up. We had their pictures and everything up in the show. We had their music in the, in the deck ready to play. We had awards that we had to give to them. They didn't even come. But at the end of the day, what did you live? I think that's live? a part of the game, though. But what did you live? You got to look at the realness of people like what did you live who no longer here with us. Yeah. Got in his truck, drove from Downworth or wherever he was living mm -hmm. at the time, supported our, our podcast. Not only him, all of his group. The Wyatt, uh, what's the, the other little cat name? Uh, Barrio. Barrio, uh, uh, Lil Blake, all those guys from Two Folk. Came over here and supported what we was doing, man. But to lose what it's live, man, was a big loss, man. And uh, I know that camp is still feeling it today, man. And we got to talk to him about God as well. And that's the thing that this platform is here to do, is to talk to young people about God when somebody else may not ever get that opportunity to. And um, to meet people where they're on, where they're at. That's what I keep saying. This platform is here to meet people where they're at. If you're not all the way right yet, if you still got issues, this is the place for you. Um, I'm all right with it. I love hard, man. Uh, everybody, man, from even going down there dealing with LD, which that's my boy right there. <laughs> LD 300, man, taking us on his. I know I haven't got your stuff out yet, man, but leave me alone. Quit playing, man. <laughs> Give me a call. Bro. But but yeah, definitely, man. Uh, uh, LD 300, man. Mama Scott, fast bash. Fast DNT. Fast DNT, man. Pop Johnson. All these people that support us, man. Freeway Ricky Ross, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we are. We're not that big, but man, we coming through, man, like you supposed to, man. Uh, that boy Dirt. Dirt's beat. Mm -hmm. Ronaldo Spencer. Ronnie right Spencer. Spencer. Come on, man. Here come the wave. Mm -hmm. My girl, Terry Bobby Terry. Billions. Bobby Billions and Rainwater. That situation was something else as well. You can't write this stuff and make this stuff up, man. We went down and interviewed uh, Bobby, Bobby Billions because we had already interviewed Rainwater. We had so much information that it was like, man, we got to get both sides of the story, man. And Rainwater, I couldn't even get him over here when I first uh, <laughs> when I first was reaching out to him. And now he understand what we're our mission is. That's our whole mission is to let everybody in any have a voice. Know. You can and have people a voice. to have a voice. And we're not going to be that platform where we're one sided, where we only interview one side of a point of view. If you're going to say something about someone else, we need to get the facts. We need to. And in my life, I always say there's three sides to a story. There is his side, his side, and there's the truth. Because it's not to say that one person is telling a lie, but that's their perspective about what transpired that day. So, and that, and the other person have a different perspective. Man. So it's not always say it's a lie here or a lie there. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's that person's perspective. Just like in the Bible, you have in the gospel, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and they're talking about the same instances. But when you read it, it's different, not totally different, but it's worded in a different way, but it's about the same situations. Man. So it's the same thing. It's always different people's perspectives. So you always have to keep that in mind when you're listening to people speak. Man, just, just, just it, it, that, that's, that's so true. Um, you know, these guys, man, like I said, man, shout out to Touch the Skin, man. Those are my girls. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Lima and, and Taylor, man. And shout out to uh, Sir Charles Jones and Bad News. You come, you, your stuff is coming out. Bad News. Sir Charles Jones was another one, man. It was easy, man. And and don't forget about uh, my, 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 my boy, man. LJ Eccles. LJ Eccles. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.